video is on Lesson 10.1, the three trigonometric functions. And to begin with, we're going to start by looking at uh, the definition of our three trigonometric ratios. Now, I know you've used these a little bit in your science course um, and probably a little bit last year in, in uh, geometry as well. But the three uh, ratios that we're looking at are sine, cosine, and tangent. And you'll notice that I, I, as I'm as I'm defining them, I'm defining them as ratios between sides of a right triangle. So when I say the sine of theta, I'm saying if I take a look at the leg opposite theta, which would be the this leg right here, compared to the hypotenuse, that ratio represents the sine of that particular angle. The cosine is the adjacent leg compared to the hypotenuse, and the tangent of theta is equal to the the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So in, in each case, we're looking at a ratio between sides of a right triangle. These trigonometric ratios are dependent upon the angles. Therefore, um, we can think of them as being functions. So the sine, cosine, and tangent are functions of theta, where theta is the independent variable. And we can think of them and write them as as functions as well. So I could say f of theta is equal to the sine of theta, or f of theta is equal to the cosine of theta, or f of theta is equal to the tangent of theta. And when I say theta, all that is is, is a Greek letter that stands for the measure of that acute angle that we're looking at. Okay. Um, for the right triangle definition of these functions, they have a domain of 0 to 90 degrees. Because we're talking about a right triangle, there's no way that that angle can be any greater than an acute angle, so it's got to be 0 to 90 degrees. However, later in this course, as we, as we explore a little bit more with sine, cosine, and tangent, we're going to find that we're going to extend that domain uh, beyond just 0 to 90, in fact, to all real numbers, and we'll talk about that later. Okay. Now, when we look at a ratio, um, uh, one of these trigonometric ratios, in terms of, for purposes of this book, when we round them off, we're going to round them to the nearest thousandth, so three digits after the decimal place. And when we do that, if we're, if we're doing a long calculation involving these trigonometric ratios, we don't want to actually do the rounding until the very end. Okay? If we do it early in our, in our calculations, it, it, what, what happens is we end up doing double rounding or triple rounding which means that our final answer may be off significantly from where it actually needs to be. So we have to be a little bit careful about that as we're going through and um, solving problems involving that. OK, now what we want to do is we want to look at using trigonometry to find sides of a right triangle. And at the beginning of this chapter, uh, sec section 10.1, there was an example problem involving a flag similar to the picture that you see here. It was also in the book. If, if you haven't done so already, and, and maybe just reread, but take a look at example 1. This problem is very similar to that. So, be um, so to begin with here, so as I'm doing this problem now, um, it says using the flagpole mentioned on page 662, which is this picture right over here, Find the distance from point A to the top of the flagpole using Pythagorean's theorem to check your answer. So if this is 22 feet and I want to find the distance from A to the top here, I'm going to call that distance x. Okay. Next I'm going to look at what is the relationship between this side of our triangle and this side. Well, this is the, in, in relation to this angle, this would be the adjacent side. And this up here would be the hypotenuse. Since I have the adjacent and I want to find the hypotenuse, the relationship that we have there is the cosine. So what I can do is I can say the cosine of my angle, well, the angle is 39 degrees, so it would be the cosine of 39 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is 22, over the hypotenuse, which is x. OK, so to finish this problem, I need to solve for x. Right now, x is on the bottom, and I need to get it off the bottom. So there's a couple ways I can do it. I think you know, we, can, we can multiply both sides by x. And then if I do that, I get x 
times the cosine of 39 is equal to um, 22. And then I can divide by the cosine of 39. Now notice how I haven't done any figuring of anything yet. I just kind of have left it exactly as, as is at this point. Um, I'm going to cross these out. And if I do that, I have x equals. Now I can go to my calculator and do that. Now, I know that you've, you've done a little bit of work with um, sine, cosine, and tangent on your calculator in your physics class. Make sure that you're set at degrees. Go to your system settings. Make sure that it's set on degrees and not ratings. And I think most of you are already have that set up. If you don't, they'll make sure that it's there. Um, so I'm going to take then, I'm going to take 22. And I'm going to divide by the cosine of 39 degrees. Okay. Put my end parentheses on there. And you'll notice that I come up with an a angle measure of about 28.3 degrees. So that means that x is about 28.3 .3 feet because it represents this distance right here. Okay. So that's how we can use um, trigonometry to find the length of a side of a triangle. Okay, next we're looking at the idea of angle of elevation of an object. So if I, if I look at like the sun or whatever, when we talk about the angle of elevation, um, it's, it's basically the angle between the horizontal base of an object and the observer's line of sight. So if you think about an angle of elevation, if this is the horizon here, okay, if this is if this is a horizontal distance, this right here would represent an angle of elevation. This number two says, what is the horizontal distance from point H to point I? Well, just like the last problem, if I'm going to try and find a horizontal distance, I'm looking at a ratio between sides. This would represent that horizontal distance. I know this angle is 16.7. So if I look at the comparison of the, the number that I know and the number I want to know, since it's the opposite to 16.7 and the adjacent to 16.7, the relationship between those two sides is the tangent. So I can think of the tangent of 16.7 is equal to the opposite, which is 490, over the adjacent, which is x. Okay, So if I want to solve for x, really another method, a little different than we did in the last problem, is you can think of this as being like the tangent of 16.7 over 1, and we can use our means extreme. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two values, and I'm going to switch where they are. And I can say x is equal to 490 over the tangent of 16.7. Now, at this point, then we can go to our calculator and enter that, and that will give me the value that I'm looking for. I'm sorry, 1,633. Um, and that would represent uh, meters, so we'll go with that value. Okay, if you, if you uh, want at this point, if you could stop the video and, and watch example 3, or take a look and read through example 3 on page 666 in your book. And then I'm going to do this problem number 3 here as well. It says, each edge of the regular pentagon, A, B, C, D, E, is 15.4 inches. Find the length of the diagonal AC. Well, sometimes we have triangles where, or we have situations where we may not have a right triangle, but we can create a right triangle to help us solve uh, for a particular situation, and this would be one of those. So if I'm trying to find the diagonal AC, I'm trying to find this distance right here. I know this distance here is 15.4. I know this is 15.4, and I'm trying to find this distance right here, AC. Okay, so to do this one, if I want to find AC, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to add an auxiliary figure. So I'm just going to drop a perpendicular line from B to make a right triangle. Now by doing that, there's something I know, because this is a, is a um, 
regular pentagon, each one of these angles is 108 degrees. And you can kind of take a look at the example as kind of going back to geometry, how we get that, the n minus 2 times 180, and then divide it by 5. But if that's 108 degrees, then this angle has to be 54 degrees. So now I'm going to pull that triangle out just so we have a little bit more room. I've got this right triangle, 54 degrees, right here. And then I, if I can find this, I can double it to get the whole distance. So I'm going to use trigonometry to do that. In relation to the 54 degrees, x is the opposite side. 15.4 is the hypotenuse. So I can say opposite of hypotenuse would be sine. So I can say the sine of 54 degrees is equal to x over 15.4. Now it's a matter of solving that. So if I want to solve for x, if I, I got to get rid of this 15.4. So if x is being divided by 15.4, to solve that I need to multiply by 15.4 on both sides. So on my calculator, I'm going to take 15.4 times the sine of 54. And that will give me x, which is about 12.45. And then I've got to double that. So I'm going to multiply that by 2 which is about 24.9. So, so that means that AC is approximately 24.9 um, inches. Okay. So um, we can use uh, trigonometry to solve for lengths. Um, what I'd like to do now is look at uh, special right triangles and use using sine and cosine to um, come up with lengths using special right triangles. So when theta is 30, 45, or 60 degrees, you can use properties of 45, 45, 90 triangles or 30, 60, 90 degree triangles to find exact values of the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. You might want to take a minute or two right now to read through example 4 on page 666 before trying uh, this particular example. Okay, number four here says draw the right triangle with a hypotenuse AB of 10 and a leg AC of 5. So I've got this triangle, I've got a hypotenuse of 10, call that AB, and we have a leg AC of 5 and a third leg BC of 5 square root of 3. It says use your triangle to find an expression for the cosine of B. Okay, once again, this is a right triangle. So I can say the cosine of B is equal to, here's angle B. Cosine is adjacent compared to hypotenuse, so 5 square root of 3 over 10. Okay. Well, if I look at 5 square root of 3 over 10, that's equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So this would be the value of the cosine of b. From special right triangles from geometry, the relationship between the three sides here is if this is x, notice how this is x times the square root of 3, and this is 2x. Well, that's the same relationship that we have in a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Therefore, angle B is 30 degrees. So we know the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Now, there are other exact values, and we can find them all kind of in the same way. but I have them at the bottom of your notes here, or you should get these down. And that is, these are exact values for sine, cosine that you need to know. So you'll have to have these memorized if you... Okay.